Hi everyone, in this week's Employee Spotlight edition, I'm joined by Gillian Whelan. Gillian is the Head of Training and Account Management here at Aspira. Thanks for joining me today, Gillian. Thanks for having me, Deirdre. Gillian, can you tell me a little bit about your career path to date and maybe what led you to Aspira initially? Oh, I would say my career path is not the probably traditional career path of um, the Head of Training or the Head of Account Management in any company, but and um, many years ago when I did my leave insert, I had wanted to be a teacher and um, while I was waiting to get my results, I took a job for the summer in the bank. And of course, that meant I moved from quite a rural area up to the city and got used to having uh, earning money and having a great social life with my cousins up in Dublin. So by the time the points were announced and I discovered I had got my placement in college to do teaching, I decided, no, I'm going to take a whole year out and I'm going to mature and I'm going to save loads of money so that when I go to college next year, I won't be a financial burden on my parents. But um, I had a great time working in the bank over that year. And by the time the following year out of college had come about, I'd spent more money than I'd saved, which is unfortunately a trend I haven't managed to break uh, since and going to college didn't feel like it was the right thing at that point in time so I stayed in the bank and I worked in a number of operational roles really in the bank so I worked in an accountancy department a customer service role had a number of different roles and once I suppose the kind of mundaneness of working in a daily operation environment once I got a little bit bored of that I decided then that I'd move into projects so I moved into a project team and I started as a business analyst I went from being a business analyst to a project manager and um, from being a project manager to a senior project manager and then a senior project manager to managing a team of project managers. And ultimately, by the time I left financial services in 2015, I was a vice president managing a large group of project managers and I had seen my fair share of projects that had gone well and some that hadn't gone well. Um, I did actually close the academic gap um, while I was working full time. So um, back in my financial services day, I had applied for a scholarship to do a post grad in financial services. And if I'm being really honest, I applied for it because, you know, my boss at the time was putting me under pressure to close the academic gap, kind of was a monkey on my shoulder. But there was part of me that didn't actually want to win the scholarship. But however, I won the scholarship. And um, I remember uh, ringing my husband at the time to say, I'm after winning this scholarship and now I have to study part time on top of having a very busy job. But it was probably the best thing that happened to me. So it was really tough trying to balance my, my workload and study by night, but it was doable. And of course, I had a small child at home as well. I had just had my little boy and well, he just started in school. So I had him a few years, obviously. But um, it was tough trying to, to balance balance everything. But it definitely going to college myself part time really ignited something in me in terms of the importance of personal development and investing in learning new skills and gaining knowledge. So I did the post grad and I decided then I'm going to take a year out. I'm going to do my master's. And it was when I had that year off and I was doing my master's that I came into contact with Pat, who um, is one of the founders of Aspira. And, you know, Pat recognised that I had a lot of practical experience of delivering projects. I was closing the academic gap, albeit not primarily in uh, project management. So Pat encouraged me to go and pursue a project management qualification, which I did also. So in that year I had off, I did my master's and I did my PMP qualification and then I joined Aspira. So when I joined Aspira, initially I was part of the, I suppose, delivery team and my first piece of work for Aspira was to go on site with um, a client and deliver a very large um, IT integration program um, in, a, in a retail services business. It sounded like my dream job actually when I found out I was going to be working in retail, but actually I was just working in an IT department and it could have been any business. So delivered that program successfully and then I moved into training delivery and advisory work for Aspira. And that was my next question, Gillian. What prompted the move to project management training delivery? And you know, what qualities do you need to be an effective trainer in that field? Yeah, so I'll start with what does it take to be a good trainer? So there's probably three things that are required to be a trainer. And the first one is that you have to know your content, right? So I don't think you can I don't think you can lie. I think you really truly have to know your content and know it deeply. Um, but I think that that's only part of what you need. And unfortunately, I think there are a lot of trainers out there 
that they they read a book and they're able to memorize it and they're able to rehash and train other people in what's in like what's included in that book but that's not in my opinion that you need much more than that so one of the things i think that really adds to our training and um, delivery and the experience of the trainees that we have in our courses is that we don't just teach them in the theory we share a lot of our personal experiences of how you can actually apply this theory and how it can make a positive difference in your day job so that's something that I feel I'm, I'm maybe too generous in sharing my experiences of what's worked well in the past for me, what hasn't worked as well. But I truly believe that that enriches a trainee's experience. And there are the stories and the anecdotes that they remember when they go back to their day job. So they're much more likely to use what they've learned from a training perspective. And then 100% you have to have a sense of humour as well. So some of the topics, you know, they're, they're, um, we're, we're not, we're not uh, solving world problems here, although to some people being able to deliver projects would make a massive difference in their world. Um, so you kind of need to have a sense of humour as well and good people skills. So I think I bring that to the table as well. And I think that, that me and the training team in Aspira, we have good people skills in abundance, which really adds to the training experience. So just, Moving on a little bit, you know, the need for experienced and well-trained project uh, managers is, is growing. You know, for an individual starting off, Gillian, you know, which course or which path would you advise them to begin with? And I suppose then once they've done that, what's the subsequent credentials you encourage them to pursue? Okay, so, um, you know, Deirdre, that's actually a really good question because it's something I had to work out for myself. So when I joined, when I was joining as Vira, I had a huge amount of practical project management experience under my belt, but I didn't have a formal qualification. So personally, as a trainee, I had to figure out myself, well, what are the best qualifications out there and what qualification should I pursue? And like that's many years ago since I've done that. And recently having taken over as head of account management and head of training, I'm obviously thinking about the future of training. And I've done quite a bit of research in terms of what are the best qualifications or certifications out there in the market in terms of project management. So I've actually recently redone that exercise and that's part of the start of my journey in Aspira. And, and look, there, there are loads of options out there in terms of certification, but my own personal thoughts are the PMP has always been one of the best and will always be one of the best. And the reason I feel quite strongly about that is historically, there's probably been a view that the PMP qualification, which is issued by the PMI, so PMI is globally recognised standard in relation to project management. And mm-hmm. um, historically, it's been viewed as being quite focused on traditional or waterfall project management methodologies. But in January of last year, the exam actually changed. And now if you want to go into your PMP exam and pass your exam, you are going to be tested on your knowledge, awareness and experience of working not just in a predictive way, but also working in an agile or a hybrid way. And to me, what that signals to the world is I can deliver a project in both a traditional waterfall style, or I can deliver it in an agile manner, or I can deliver it in a hybrid manner. So it's kind of taken all boxes. So I still feel very passionately that the PMP is definitely one of the best qualifications out there. However, you can't just go and sit that exam. You've got to start somewhere. So if um, if somebody who's interested in pursuing qualification doesn't have enough experience, so you, you need a certain amount of practical experience, either three years or five years, depending on your academic background. Okay. So if, if somebody was interested in pursuing PMP and they didn't have the necessary academic um, experience, the necessary practical experience that they need in order to be eligible to do the exam, I would strongly encourage them to consider sitting the CAPM exam. So the CAPM exam is almost like, it's not primarily a lead into the PMP, but a lot of people use it for that reason. So it certifies or signals to the world that you can contribute to projects. It's based on a lot of the same concepts and theory. And uh, most people that would go and sit their CAPM exam will eventually go on and pass their PMP exam. So that's kind of the path that if I was personally rolling out advice, I would. And then of course, you know, we have to cater, Deirdre, to people who maybe don't necessarily want certification but they want to learn the basics so that's Mm -hmm. one of the things i'm really proud about in aspira we offer you know half day training courses one day training courses two day training courses so they teach people the basics in a practical way so they can go back to their day job 
they'll see improvements in their performance and that leads to benefits for the organization they work for and great if they want to take that further and become certified but there's still a benefit for for the individual and for their organization so as far as being a pmi registered education provider since um for pmp training since 2008 but you were recently awarded the pmi authorized training provider status um, which you put a lot of work into yourself. It is. <laughs> yes. What are the advantages, Gillian, for somebody completing um, the PMP authorised exam prep course through a PMI ATP Life Aspire? Yeah, well, well firstly, um, there isn't a huge amount of companies that have an ATP badge because it's not easy earned. You can't just decide, oh, I, I'd like that. You, we go through a rigorous process of establishing, um, are we fit for purpose? Do we deliver training to the necessary quality standard? Are our trainers, um, are they delivering training to the necessary quality standard? So we've gone through that process. We've been successful. We're very proud of the fact that we are a PMI ATP. So what that means though, from a trainee perspective, Deirdre, is that they can be guaranteed that they're getting the highest quality of training, training that's recognized by the PMI as being suitable for somebody who wants to go and sit that exam. So inevitably, that's going to lead to an increased likelihood of them being able to pass the actual exam because the content that we use to prepare a trainee to do the exam mm -hmm. is recognized as being suitable by the PMI. So Gillian, you were a finalist in the PMI Project Professional of the Year in 2021, which awesome. exemplifies the best in, in the profession. How did that come about? So I, I was nominated by one of our clients, actually, which I'm also very proud of because, you know, often we, we have lots of people who work very hard. And I think especially when you're, you're working with a client and you, you don't work for them full time, you're maybe contracting with them or working with them on a part time basis. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the efforts of those people go unnoticed because you're not part of the, you know, the everyday business or the day to day team. So I was really, really proud to be nominated by one of our most important customers for that award. In terms of how it came about, well, I'm, I'm, look, I think it's fair to say a program manager or a project manager is only as good as the team behind them. So yes, I was nominated, but I honestly feel like it was more a reflection of the work of the team that I had working for me rather than just me individually. And um, I don't know whether you'd say we were lucky or unlucky, but we were working on a significant program. So I was heading up, I was program manager for a global program that was impacting more than 40 countries where there was 38 projects to be rolled out. So it was massively complex, hundreds of stakeholders, very big budget, quite aggressive timelines, and we delivered on budget, on time, and the full scope, um, and to the necessary quality standards. So I'm pretty sure our client was very happy as a result of all of that, and that's what led to the nomination. But yes, I was nominated, but it's absolutely a reflection of the good work that the team I had working with me completed, as well as my, my own efforts. So it, it's really a team award, I feel. So you recently took over the role of Head of Account Management here in Aspira. What does that involve uh, for you, Gillian? How does Aspira's customers benefit from that function within Aspira? Yeah, so that's like quite a new area for me to move into, but it's probably a good fit in terms of, you know, training and some of the softer skills I need to head up training are applicable in heading up the account management function. So in terms of how our customers benefit, um, our customers that have a, a dedicated account manager have the benefit of knowing that there's somebody on the other end of the phone who knows their business intimately and who wants to nurture that relationship that we've built up. We've put a lot of effort into building up over a number of years and they have confidence that their account manager is somebody who has their best interest at heart and is looking at the next products and services that we should be developing that are going to help our customers succeed, but obviously also help Aspire succeed. So um, I think I'm in a very fortunate position in that I've taken over an account management team that has very experienced account managers who've been with Aspire since day one, who know our customers intimately and who have very strong relationships there. So um, yes, I've just taken over that function and I, you know, as a team, we've got great plans for the future. But I think it's safe to say they're doing a great job already. And a lot of our customers that we have have been with us from day one. We are continuing to grow and expand, which is really exciting and it's, it's really good. But I always think when you look at a business and you can see that some of their customers are there since since day one, that, is, that in itself really tells a story. And to me, that's directly down to 
the the relationship that our account managers have with our customer and the fact we put our customer first. Julian, thanks for joining me today. I've really enjoyed speaking with you. Thank you very much.